We are in Pioneer Square, which has uh, become a hub of activity and a lot of good work in uh, Seattle's tech industry. And some of that is being done here uh, with the Mego app. And this is uh, CEO Jeff Warren. Uh, Jeff, Mego, as I understand it, uh, it, will be useful with the viaduct closure in order to help people get through. How does it work? Yeah, so Migo's a real-time search app for on-demand transportation. So basically, we founded Migo not necessarily to help people with their commute, but when they're out of pattern, when there's something wrong with their commute. And, you know, the, the Via Doom project is nothing but being out of pattern for a whole couple of weeks here. So what you do with Migo is you, you fire it up, and it immediately shows you every single transportation option that's immediately around you, whether it's a bike, whether it's um, a car share, like car to go. Uh, or whether it's a TNC or a taxi. So we've got Yellow Cab, we've got Orange Cab, we've got Uber, we've got Lyft, we've got uh, public transportation, and then we've got all the bikes. Well, and scooters, I even understand. Uh, not in Seattle, but yes, we have scooters. That's true, because yep. they haven't allowed uh, scooters in Seattle. That's yep. fantastic. So you mentioned it's, you know, for when things are out of pattern. Right. How quickly are you able to make adjustments? Because one of the things we discovered the other day is that a couple of the, at least one of the uh, rideshare apps did an update on its maps, but it's taking rideshare drivers into the new tunnel that's not open yet, so they kind of jumped the gun. We also know Google and Waze are updating their algorithms to reflect right. what's going on. How do you guys do that? Yeah, we don't necessarily affect the operations of our partners. So for our partners to have the right maps, that's really, we see it as their business. What we do is whenever something changes in a feed, so for instance, when Google might update uh, traffic information or patterns, you would immediately see that reflected within Mego. But we're not telling the rideshare partners or anyone else like where to go or what to do. We just help people discover them and find them and understand what the costs are going to look like and what the ETAs are going to look like for them to access that form of transportation. Who are some of your partners? Oh, so uh, the TNC providers, so Uber and Lyft are two of our, our largest partners. We've got Lime on Mego. We've got, of course, the bike provider that Uber has Jump. Um, we had all the other bike providers before they exited the Seattle market. Um, we, have, we list public transportation, uh, and that's one of the things we're very proud of. We actually look at public transportation in a slightly different way than some of uh, our competitors, where it's not just showing you a menu of everything you can possibly do. We try to just narrow it down to the one that's going to help you the most right now. Um, uh, and then we have uh, Seattle Yellow Cab has been one of our, our origination partners uh, from you know two years ago, and then we have Orange Cab, uh, Steeda through their partner apps. So if they're available on another app, typically we'll pick them up. Yellow Cab happens to have their own, so they've been as I said it was a launch partner for us. So how do you incorporate the other firms' apps into yours? Uh, it's just technical, you know, wizardry in the back end. So either they have uh, what's called an application programming interface that we can hook into, and we get all the real-time updates from them, and we show things to people who are using Migo on the fly. Uh, or if they don't have an API that's public, um, typically we'll work with them directly and find a way to hook into their systems so that to both their systems and to the, the person using Migo, it just looks natural. It just looks like what they'd be used to seeing. We're not having people do cartwheels or make someone change their dispatch system in the back end. Um, we're just here to connect people with a ride. So for a first time user who's never tried it out, what do they need to know so that they can start to put Migo to work right away? Yeah, uh, so getting Migo started is very simple. You literally just put it onto your iPhone, and I'll just mention our Android release is in beta. We only have about 50 people on it around uh, the Seattle and Portland area right now. But the iPhone is freely available on the App Store. Um, when As soon as you boot up Migo, you're going to see ride options immediately. However, you won't necessarily always see the best price unless you connect to an account or create a new account with some of our providers. So that's one of the tool tips you get as soon as you access Migo. It'll tell you, hey, hook in to your Lyft account or your Uber account or your Yellow Cab account or create a new one and you'll get the best prices, you'll get your promotions, and then you're ready to go. Is that how the options are sorted by best price? It's actually, uh, it depends. Um, uh, the default is to sort it by ETA, by so how long it's going to take you to access that form of transportation. And that's whether you're walking to a bike or walking to a car share or waiting for a taxi or a TNC to pick you up. Um, you can also then sort it by price, uh, and that's a, something you can select right in our menu. So one of the things I was thinking about is because you have other commercial entities as partners like Uber and Lyft or Yellow and Orange Cab, uh, 
you know, I think back to when we learned that Google, with some of its commercial partners in a search, might give them sort of a leg up and, and move them up in the search. Sure. How does Mego work in that regard, or does we, it? We don't. It's, it's the search is how we explained it. It's, it's by ETA. It's whatever is going to be most helpful to you right now based on what you want. Um, we start off by showing you absolutely everything, which frankly can be overwhelming when you're in a place like Pioneer Square and you've got a thousand bikes within you know, two blocks. Um, but we have fast filters on the bottom of the screen that allow you to just quickly turn off any modes that are not going to be applicable to you right now. Um, and then we sort it by whatever is closest uh, or by price, depending on what you want. So if I don't want to ride a bike in the rain, I can eliminate that and wipe all those little dots off the map and, and we can narrow it down from there. Yeah, although you'd be surprised, we actually see frequency of access of bikes go up when the weather's bad. And it's because when the weather's nice, people a lot of times will use bikes instead of cars. But when the weather's not so nice, a lot of times people use bikes instead of walking. Um, and so you'll see a lot of these really short little trips happen on bikes. But yes, absolutely, if that's your preference. Well, and that brings up another good question. Are you gauging which are the more popular choices? Oh yeah, we definitely look at our data constantly to see what consumers prefer in what conditions and what areas. And we actually provide that data without any personally identifiable information, just aggregate data, on what seems to be popular in certain areas so that our partners can actually plan. So we help our partners do demand planning and figuring out where to place bikes or to find drivers or to place supply at different times of day. Well, you had mentioned the what I would consider unusual behavior when it comes to bikes in the rain, uh, but what do you find in terms of current users are tend to be some of the more popular options? I mean, I know a lot of people like to use ride share. Uh, I mean, is that yeah. near the top of the list? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that we really were excited about when I first launched Mego was people actually used every form of transportation on the platform. A lot of people, particularly investors, when we got started saying, oh, you know, it's all about just, you know, TNCs. And the reality was, is as we launched, the data that we saw was that everybody was using everything. Now, there's a balance, though. We see that TNCs definitely are on the top of the list. Taxis come in somewhere below that. Um, ride share in, or car share, sorry, in Seattle is actually quite popular. We see that varying dramatically by city, and not even necessarily cities where car share is available, but there's a pattern of consumers uh, where consumers accept it more than other cities, or where car ownership statistics are different, right, car ownership demographics. And then uh, bikes and scooters have been a revelation. When we started, um, you know, we had one bike share company in Seattle in operation. They immediately went out of business. That was Pronto. Um, and then suddenly the dockless guys came in and took off. In every market where we've seen scooters come alongside bikes, we've just seen scooters skyrocket and bikes kind of either flatten or, um, or go down a little bit. So, yeah, we definitely see patterns in, in what people are using for transportation. So uh, let's say something happens. Uh, you've picked the, uh, some options and you've made your choice and uh, there's a crash along the way, and all of a sudden that option becomes 20 minutes longer. Right. Does your app give you adjustment options as you go along? Um, it again goes to the operations of our partners. So if, if, uh, if a car, for instance, um, turns down a fare, right, a taxi or a TNC accepts a ride and then suddenly isn't arriving, um, you can very quickly back out and just see what's available now. So we're really about that real-time adjustment to things not going perfectly. Um, and I will say, people do use this for commuting. Uh, in Seattle, we see a good spike of traffic in the morning and a good spike of traffic in the evening. But our best stories, when consumers are actually telling us like what they like, the best stories come to us when they discover something new, when they're out of pattern. Like, I needed to get to the airport. The traffic on I-5 was crazy. I didn't know how I was going to get there. And suddenly it lit up you know, a public transit option that I wasn't even aware of, and I got to the airport on time. Those are stories we hear all the time. It's great. Excellent. Well, I'm anxious to see how it works. Can we get a demo? Yep, sure. So here's the Mego icon right here. We fire it up, and immediately our options in Seattle become apparent. We actually uh, zoom in. You'll notice that zoom that came in. We zoom in to show you just what's really close by. Like there's some car to go in the parking garage right nearby. We see some bikes down here. If I zoom out just a little bit, you can see if we stayed zoom out, how confusing it could get. And we're actually limiting what's on the screen here to a certain extent. So I'm just going to zoom in again. There we go. So again, we just show you the options that are most relevant to you right now. We have our wallet 
function, which basically shows you where you've connected accounts, and you can immediately access that information. Um, once you type in a destination, so I'll do uh, my favorite little wine store on Capitol Hill, you see comparative pricing. Um, you'll notice now I'm actually sorting it by price. You'll see, so I've got line bike for a dollar, jump for two dollars, public transit, uh, and the closest public transit option is probably the light rail. Um, let's see. Yeah, it looks that way. Um, and then we've got the various TNC options, and then typically a taxi option. You'll notice actually how price competitive all the players are these days. And a lot of people don't realize that as the market's kind of begun to normalize, that you know everyone's becoming much more price competitive with each other. Um, and so now if you, I wanted to hail something, I simply tap the icon, and if I confirm, the ride's on its way. That's it. So, and one of the nice things about Mego, which is different than a lot of our competitors, um, it, like Google Maps, for instance, you don't need to have the partner app on your phone in order to access it. Uh, and there are some exceptions. For instance, with CarShare, like Car2Go, we do not want to be your provider if, for instance, you get into an accident or something's wrong with the car. So for something like CarShare, you have to access the other app. But for something like Yellow Cab, if you want to actually use the Yellow Cab app, you can always just tap that link and you go right into Yellow Cab and it knows where you are, where you want to go, what price you've been quoted when you get there and you just book it. Um, same thing with Uber or Lyft. Uh, so you can actually, so if you're out of pattern, you don't have to sit there on the side of a you know, street and download another app to access the mode of transportation within Migo, it's all available to you right away. So the one thing I noticed that's pretty cool too is in addition to you have it sorted by price, but you'll see it's flashing back and forth between price and how long each option will take. Yep. Yep. And then to a point you made earlier, if you don't care to see bikes right now, you just tap that, bikes are gone, and now it shows you all the options uh, without bikes. If you don't have a car to go uh, account and for car to go it actually takes about six to twelve hours to get your account validated. So if it's not an option for you right now, you can just tap that icon and, and it's gone and you're just seeing taxes and TNCs. And if you have no idea what the icons mean, you can always just tap that and figure it out. So Amazing. that's Mega. Yeah, wow, there's a lot of stuff in one app and it's it's like a one stop shop. Uh, Jeff, are you expecting an increase in uh, usership? As this viaduct, uh, via doom goes on? I, I think we'll see. We want people to be aware that there are solutions out there to help them find the best ride for them at that moment. Um, Mego is one option of, of a few that are out there, and we think we've done a pretty good job of making all the data real-time and maximally helpful to consumers. So we hope so, but um, you know, obviously people have to find their own solutions for dealing with a pretty major transportation project, yeah, which it's should be good for the city. Yeah, and it's going to be huge, so it's yeah. where none. I don't think any of us are looking forward to it. But right. and we've got a front row seat, so it'll be fun to <laughs> to not only see what's going on one block away from us, but also to see what's happening on our on our data in Migo. All right, very good, Jeff Warren, CEO of Migo. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you.